The medication we are talking about now is also known as acid block or stomach protection tablets, for example, pantoprazole or omeprazole, and they are used in certain diseases to inhibit the creation of stomach acid in your body. That's their intended main purpose, their main goal. In Germany, they are among the most frequently prescribed medications. Used in the short term, they are also well tolerated by most patients and they are also very, very important. However, there are some risks associated with long-term use that are often underestimated. It's often like this. You get them prescribed quite suddenly and just keep on taking them. People somehow forget to stop taking them. You should be aware of these risks in the form of side effects if you are taking stomach protection tablets. I will now explain what these side effects are and then I will discuss another question. Are stomach protection tablets deadly? Hello, my name is Dr. Tobias Wegel. With my YouTube channel, I want to provide medically correct and understandable information about diseases, but also about medications. And if you don't want to miss anything, then please subscribe to my channel now. After statins, which are taken for high cholesterol, proton pump inhibitors, in other words, stomach protection tablets, are among the most frequently prescribed medications worldwide and, according to general estimates, also among the two frequently prescribed medications. Very important, too frequently prescribed. In Germany alone, sales of proton pump inhibitors amount to almost 1 billion euros per year and over 14 billion euros worldwide. In summary, there are certain voices in the specialist literature who do actually say that they get prescribed too often for too long and in too high a dose. What exactly are proton pump inhibitors and what are they being used for? PPI stands for proton pump inhibitor. This already describes quite accurately what these drugs do. They block the so-called proton pumps in the stomach from working. And these pumps ultimately ensure that the useful stomach acid is formed in the body. However, stomach acid can also be aggressive. These pumps are very important for this and they are blocked, they are inhibited from working. We need stomach acid to digest our food, but it is also useful to ward off harmful bacteria, especially the topic of fending off harmful bacteria. I'll get to that in a moment. That is quite useful. So our stomach acid is important, otherwise we wouldn't have it. Usually we also have a protective layer that lines the inside of our stomach and naturally protects the cells from being damaged by the acid themselves. This is the stomach lining. It becomes problematic when this balance is disturbed, in other words, when too much stomach acid or too little protection is produced. This could happen, for example, if our stomach lining is injured, but there are many potential reasons. And this can actually be the case with certain diseases. For example, an infection with the bacterium Helicobacter pylori could cause it. Another possibility is a gastroesophageal reflux disease, also known as GERD, or an ulcer formation in the stomach. And this is where PPIs come in. They help to protect the stomach and also the esophagus from further damage caused by stomach acid. And especially the esophagus is threatened when stomach acid keeps coming up there, this can lead to esophageal cancer, which is really very bad and dangerous. Proton pump inhibitors are also very often prescribed together with higher dose painkillers from the NSAID group. The classic solution here would be an IBU 600 and stomach protection. And the PPIs are supposed to cushion the side effects of the ibuprofen. Ibuprofen actually causes stomach problems in many people as side effect. Ibuprofen and other NSAIDs inhibit the production of gastric mucosa, which, as I have just said, protects our stomach from its own stomach acid. The PPI often has to be taken prophylactically together at the same time as the ibuprofen already. If you would like to know more about the side effects of ibuprofen, take a look at this previous video of mine. Some patients also take the stomach protection tablets for simple heartburn because they do not require a prescription up to a certain strength of the medication. It is important to know now that proton pump inhibitors are intended to work over a long time. They have a long-term effect. So if you have spontaneous heartburn right now, these medications would actually be the wrong choice for your ailment. The full effect of the medication often only occurs after two to three days. And the heartburn that you just got now would be gone again by that time, hopefully at least. They simply don't work fast enough, not immediately during a very acute case. You should also know when to use them you should actually try to take them about half an hour before you start to eat. Typically, the dosage is one tablet before breakfast. If the symptoms tend to occur for you at night, it may also make sense to take the tablet in the evening. Here too, however, it should be taken before you start to eat. There are various active ingredients among the PPIs. The most common and oldest are pantoprazole and omeprazole. It is important to know that omeprazole can interact with some medications and cause more side effects. For example, you should not take clopidogrel and omeprazole at the same time due to their interaction. Clopidogrel, when is it prescribed? Typically after a heart attack, for example. Because 
The latter, the omeprazole, weakens the anticoagulant effect of clopidogrel. That was some initial information on the profile of these PPIs for now. Now I will go into more detail about the danger of these medications, the potential adverse effects of these drugs, taking it longer than necessary. Before I go into the individual long-term side effects, it can be stated quite clearly that, in general, proton pump blockers, proton pump inhibitors, are often taken for far too long. Most people don't cut them off when they should, but they just keep on taking them. In hospitals, they are often prescribed to patients who have to stay there for a few days and are about to undergo surgery, for example. You don't want someone to suddenly have stomach problems or similar. This is done because these patients often receive painkillers or are stressed, and stress can be a triggering factor for overproduction of stomach acid and then for a stomach ulcers, etc. The hospital wants to avoid all that, and that's why you're given an acid blocker almost as a standard measure, so to speak. That's the right thing to do. That should actually be done. It should be done in order to prevent health problems occurring or similar things. The key word here is stress ulcer prophylaxis. However, it often happens, and this is very important, that patients think they have to continue taking proton pump inhibitors even after they have been discharged, because this is often not even discussed, because they are somehow just small side tablets, smarties, so to speak. And then, of course, the general practitioner treating you is supposed to tell you, is there a real indication for the acid blocker to be taken or not? Is there any reason to take them longer than initially intended? Even with an existing indication for it, proton pump inhibitors should not be taken for longer than eight weeks. At least then you should really start to question it. This is actually according to a recommendation from the American Beers List. The only exceptions to this are high-risk patients who, for example, take cortisone or NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen on a permanent basis, or who suffer from certain types of heartburn on a permanent basis. Even when self-medicating, proton pump inhibitors should not be taken without careful consideration, and that is often a big problem, for a maximum of two weeks and not longer. If the problems, such as heartburn in connection with stomach pain, still persist, then you should consult a doctor and find out what is the underlying cause behind it. You can't just take proton pump inhibitors to reduce the symptoms if it does not solve the problem, in other words, the underlying cause behind it, risk of osteoporosis. It is still being discussed in the medical world whether PPIs are impairing bone formation and increasing the risk of bone fractures and osteoporosis. If you use them only for a short time, as I said, this is not a problem. This does not have an immediate effect on the bones, but it does with long-term use. It is suspected that PPIs also impair the absorption of the body of calcium and or vitamin D3. Both substances are very important for bone formation. It is also assumed that vitamin B12 and magnesium can be absorbed to a lesser extent by the body due to the use of PPIs. Although the mechanisms for this have not yet been clearly demonstrated, many review analyses have come to the conclusion that the risk of fractures or, in other words, of broken bones in patients who take PPI is increased. For example, this study from 2015 came to that conclusion. For you, this means the following. If you, as a patient, have a high bone fracture risk or already have osteoporosis, you or your doctor should ask yourself, are acid blockers really necessary medication for me? Does the benefit outweigh the risk or is the risk too high? If PPIs are to be used anyway, it is important to check calcium and vitamin D levels on a regular basis. For now, that's my recommendation for this. Loss of the gastric acid barrier. As already mentioned at the beginning, stomach acid has important functions. Among other things, it destroys microorganisms that enter the stomach via the mouth and could actually be harmful to us. Stomach acid is actually very, very important for us. Salmonella is a part of that, for example. It can cause gastrointestinal problems, diarrhea, and much more. The bacterium Clostridium difficile is also one of these troublemakers. Studies, such as this one from Scotland, show that there is a link between taking proton pump inhibitors, so stomach protection tablets like omeprazole and others, and an increased risk of infection. Clostridia are microorganisms that can accumulate in the intestine, and then they release toxins there. These toxins destroy the intestinal epithelium, and this results in an acute intestinal inflammation. This is accompanied by fever, abdominal cramps, and another typical symptom, mucousy, bloody diarrhea. Especially in hospitals, they are regarded as one of the most common infections caught by patients. I have also experienced this from time to time with patients. And if patients are already at risk of infection with Clostridia, proton pump administration should be critically scrutinized and questioned if it makes sense to even take them. Among these risk factors are, for example, advanced age and antibiotic therapy. 
but that's not all. It is also being discussed in the medical field whether PPIs also promote lung infections. Well, that's quite interesting. At first glance, you might think that a lung infection has absolutely nothing to do with it. But if bacteria survives in the stomach due to the acid blockage, they can ultimately reach the lungs in the event of acid regurgitation, a so-called reflux via the esophagus. In the end, it's as simple as that. And this is where they then cause pneumonia. A connection with long-term PPI use has been proven in some studies, but has also been refuted in others. Suffice to say, the data situation is therefore not yet clear. In my view, however, it makes sense to weigh up the risks and benefits for each individual patient and their respective situation, and then come to a conclusion. This is especially true for people in vulnerable groups, such as asthma patients or COPD patients. So the question is, do you already have certain pre-existing conditions on her lungs? And then you should consider the question, do you really need to take the PPI for so much time? Dementia risk from proton pump inhibitors? Another interesting question is whether acid blockers, such as pantoprazole and omeprazole, can promote, cause, or exacerbate dementia. This was examined in great detail in a large study in 2016. Over 70,000 patients took part in that study. And they were over 75 years old, the participants, and initially they had no form of dementia whatsoever. And the following was the result. The patients who took proton pump inhibitors over a long period of time ended up having a 44% higher risk of developing dementia. The authors of the study do actually believe that further investigations are necessary. That is very important. This is not a conclusive report or a figure to provide a meaningful context in this subject. But this figure at least makes you get up and take notice something. In animal studies, it has already been observed that beta amyloid deposits increase when PPI is administered. These deposits are very important for dementia, and these deposits take place in nerve cells and are associated with the development of Alzheimer's disease, which is a form of dementia. The conducted animal experiment therefore also points to a possible link between taking proton pump inhibitors and developing dementia. So there are actually one or two indications that there is actually a connection there. Are PPIs even fatal? PPIs could in fact increase the risk of death. They do this by increasing the risk of having a stroke. In addition to that, there is a study conducted in 2018. The study observed ischemic strokes suffered by patients who engaged in long-term proton pump inhibitor use. And the result was the following. Those people who were taking proton pump inhibitors over a long period of time had a higher risk of a first-time stroke happening to them. For comparison, this could not be observed with H2 antagonists, which are a different group of drugs, but are similar to PPIs. They have a similar area of application and are also taken for stomach complaints. The authors also describe a correlation between the proton pump inhibitor dose and the degree of risk increase. And so this study raises the question, how safe are pantoprazole and the others with regard to cardiovascular disease, with regard to strokes, etc.? Are proton pump inhibitors indirectly lethal? That is the question that essentially rises out of the results of the study. Of course, every effect has its side effects, but this one will certainly continue to occupy the world of research in the coming years. This will go on until a definitive connection has been established or refuted. Important for you, acid blockers such as omeprazole and pantoprazole are effective and generally well tolerated when taken for a short time. They are actually very important medications. I would also like to emphasize this at this point. They have to be prescribed for certain diseases, for example, heartburn, to prevent esophageal cancer. And as I said, they are well tolerated, which is known. That's why they are often and relatively easily prescribed by doctors for gastric acid-associated diseases. However, both the prescribing doctor and the patient should ask themselves the same questions about it. Is there actually a real and proper reason to justify the use of the proton pump inhibitors? And above all, is the targeted duration of therapy appropriate? That is the big issue. There is increasing evidence that proton pump inhibitors are not as harmless as initially thought by the medical world. This is the case when they are taken over a long period of time. If you liked and enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. You are welcome to subscribe to my channel where I discuss similar topics about other medications. And please don't hesitate to write your comments directly under the video. Thank you very much and stay loyal to me.